to this Malta Airport Foundation talk. Today, I have the pleasure to welcome here with me Andrew Kembri from the NGO Zibel, and together we are going to talk about a project that was announced just a few weeks ago uh, by the Malta Airport Foundation uh, to sponsor two sea bins at Marsa Schlock and Marsa Scala. Now, let me start. Hello, Andrew. Uh, thank you for joining us. What made you set up your NGO, Zibel, and what are sea bins? So Zibel was set up, I'm one of the co-founders of Zibel. And at the time we had set up Zibel in 2017 for just the pure reason to, to start taking action with the, the amount of waste we're finding in the countryside, on beaches. And we wanted to, to take a, a, a kind of hands-on approach to the issue rather than just complain about it and, and, and post about it. And raise more awareness, of Exactly, course. exactly. Initially, we had started just as, uh, the idea was just to do one cleanup and uh, maybe another. But as we started looking, like, getting deeper down the rabbit hole, we started to realize how, how expensive the problem is and how many different sectors are involved in it, where it comes to local councils, local, local governance from in their area. So, by time then we started to realize okay we actually need to take this all the way with the with an ngo and then from there it started it started expanding from one cleanup to two to projects fundings and other and just other initiatives either of our own volition or even some that we would join in with uh, with other ngos with now this is a very uh, interesting initiative the the idea of a sea bin what's mm -hmm. a sea bin so the Seabin was created by two Australian surfers mm -hmm. um, and the way it works is it's, it's a passive cleaning device. So this would be put in the corner of a bay or a marina, for example, and at the bottom of each Seabin is a very strong pump. It, it, uh, it filters about 25,000 litres every hour. So over a year, this uh, one Seabin can filter millions of, of gallons of, uh, millions of litres of water. And the idea is in marinas and bays, it will slowly clean the bay because the bay will, through the, its, own, its own current, mm -hmm. will start flowing into, into the area of the sea bin and the sea bin, through its pump, will suck that inside. Inside the sea bin, there is a, a very uh, fine net which will then allow the water to pass through and all the, the debris and the plastics and these things to, to stay above. And then these, together with the collaboration with the, the Cleansing and Maintenance uh, Directorate, are emptied uh, at least twice a week. So okay. through Seabin, then we collect data, which is then passed on to ERA. So that can then inform policy and then actually give us a realistic uh, view of, for example, how much waste there is in uh, touristic seasons versus the, the off season. For example, this year was quite interesting because we saw during COVID, we actually saw the waste in Seabins go down. Mm -hmm. um, and then we saw it r start rising again as expected in summer because more people were going out. And, uh, and then we saw that drop again at around, for example, September, October. So they give you a, not a real time, but somewhat a relevant idea of the, the amount of waste that's actually entering the, the sea. Because harbors are also a huge area where, where, there, are, where there are massive, where there's a, an increase in population. So around where, with these large areas in population, you can actually see a, a direct kind of correlation to the amount of waste being thrown, in, uh, being pulled, or that, that gets uh, in some way pulled, uh, the, thrown into the sea. Will they solve our problem with plastics and litter and whatever goes into our <laughs> seas? <laughs> it, um, they won't. So they're they're not the magic silver bullet that will that will fix all the issues that we have, but it's it's another tool mm -hmm. in our arsenal to against this fight. So, for example, this is why we use sea bins are good for harbors and marinas, but um, that's why we have a lot of other initiatives that are aimed at the, the Maltese coastline and, and other, uh, other avenues where plastic enters the sea. And you mentioned that it sucks litter mm -hmm. and also small plastics. How small can the plastics be? Does it uh, suck also needles or plastic? plastic pieces the size of needles? Yes, so a sea bin actually can kind of, the, if you can imagine the scale of the items it collects, which can range from a jerry can all the way down to, as you're saying, microplastics and needles down to two millimeters in size. So we also find, for example, fi uh, small plastic fibers. 
which are, which are actually from ropes and, yes. for example, from fishing nets and mm -hmm. from, from uh, these kind of marine, uh, marine types of equipment. And these, although they, don't, they are not hard like a normal plastic, they are still made of uh, HDPE, which is a type of plastic, which is kind of a harder type of plastic. And this also collects them. So we, what we will start doing soon, in fact, is actually characterizing what's in each sea bin. So once a week, we'll be taking, spreading out the catchment of a sea bin, mm -hmm. and someone will actually be going through the image and categorizing whatever we're finding inside. Why? So that we can actually now start drawing up proper statistics on the, 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 the levels of microplastics. And with microplastics, for example, it's not just what we're finding in our harbors, but as Zibel, we're also start going to be starting, for example, surveying um, of, the, of our coastline to actually understand how many microplastics are, in the, are passing by us. And uh, you do that water. through cleanups, yes? We do some of it through, through cleanups. We do more the collection part of that, okay. um, if anything. But th what we would do then, this would be more of a survey approach. Basically, okay. you have a special net that you pass through the water and just similar to a sea bin, it's very fine. So it's going to trap all these smaller plastics. And then like that, you can, can, you get, uh, you can, once repeated across Malta enough times, you can actually kind of get, start getting a realistic idea of the, the concentration amount of microplastics, which in, in the end will filter through the food chain. Unfortunately, a lot, of my, a lot of plastics that enter the, the Mediterranean will stay in the Mediterranean. They don't. They will not funnel out because it's a closed sea. I exactly, mean, there's the exactly. Suez Canal and the exactly, the and most of them, point. unfortunately, will actually fall to the to the sea floor. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we sea bins are good to a certain extent because they're catching microplastics that are entering our ports before we can we, before we can we'll we'll actually lose sight of them before mm -hmm. we'll, we we can they get buried down. Yeah, exactly, uh, the, and the our, our last bed. chance to do it. Really interesting. How important are sponsorships in projects like these? Since day one, I think I think like uh, CSR sponsorships are have been the backbone to to the best success. The idea has always been to to get as many stakeholder stakeholders involved in our project, whatever it, be it seabin, be it uh, cleanups, whatever it is. The more stakeholders you have involved, the greater the the shared uh, value is and the, and the shared kind of responsibility is in each project. So the fact that, for example, MIA have sponsored uh, two sea bins for us is good because one, it's, it's helping us with certain commitments, like for example, doing projects in the south and helping out in, in these uh, in, in more polluted areas. But also, it actually it's through, for example, through the airports uh, customers, uh, the airports. Um, own stuff, for example, it's spreading again this message of awareness. That's what's nice about the sea bin as well. It's not just something that's working 24 7, it's also, it always catches your eye, it draws you in. Mm -hmm. So it's for, for us, these kind of sponsorships are fundamental. And we see them as, um, as we see sea bin as a starting point, but eventually, I mean, we like to, to grow relationships with brands and then to, to for, for other products, not just related to to ocean ways, but I mean eventually land waste and I mean reefs and the, these kind of things. Together we can make a difference. I mean, the exactly, more people exactly. it's a, become it's a involved shared, in this. It's a, shared, uh, it's a shared problem. It's not mm -hmm. this isn't the problem of just one generation or of or just one company or just of one government. This is shared across the world right now and it's everyone has to do their part and pick up the pick up the pieces. Um, how important are land cleanups? Because a lot of uh -huh. litter on land eventually ends up in the sea, exactly, especially, especially when the rainy island. season starts. Exactly. And, and wind and... Exactly. And um, the, the more, basically, the, big, the better our efforts on land are, even something as simple as, for example, when people put out their rubbish bag, that they actually close it well. Even something as simple as that has a lead-on effect then to, to what's ending up in the sea. I mean, as we know, Malta is um, it's, it's n it, within five minutes you could very easily reach the shore from most, most areas. So if you're a plastic bag or if you're a bottle, if it rains or if it's windy, there's a very good chance it's going to end up there. You have to, uh, people need to also understand that, you know, that there are the, some, uh, 
some drains in the streets and even the way water just rushes through streets is going to just collect and collect. In areas like, for example, in Marsa um, and in Sida, people can, uh, have seen it with their own eyes. At the water level, it becomes indistinguishable between the sea and the road. So you can only imagine how much stuff gets pulled into the sea. And even, this is a, a, a common misconception, for example, is that people are people think that someone is literally standing on the edge of the shore flinging plastics into the sea. But in reality, it's, it's, this is how plastics get in. Or people are on beaches, a wave comes and just pulls in their, their belongings. This is the, kind of the reality of things. So waste ends up in the sea by accident already. Uh, and that's already enough. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, that's we shouldn't add I to the problem. Recently, there was an article saying, I think that there's about 200,000 tons entering the Mediterranean each, each year. So and that stays there forever. No, exactly, that's it. It takes ages. That's uh, it. And it never really goes away because it just decomposes into smaller particles. Exactly. That then end up, in, as you very well said, in our food chain. Exactly. And then and the food and we eat. And that's because smaller fish will st will uh, who eat plankton um, will then mistake plankton through no fault of their own obviously for these smaller plastics so then and people need to also understand that plastic contains chemicals they have oils in them so it's it's this lead on effect then the idea is to use less plastic in our daily lives you mentioned covid uh, before you said that you saw a reduction in mm -hmm. uh, sea litter uh, in the times of COVID. However, um, I think a lot of our disposables are ending up in the sea. Mm -hmm. We've seen pictures on the social media. Uh, I would be lying if I if I said we didn't see some of these items actually, like gloves and disposable like masks. gloves and these things actually uh, turn up in our sea bins or on beaches. But um, I think thankfully. There has been, initially we thought we were quite worried that, oh my God, everything we've been working for the past three years is going to go out the window. But in reality, it wasn't as bad as we thought till now. Uh, there seems to be, to, there seems to be, have been at least, it, the through, like we said, we just mentioned, through kind of mistakes of people, seeing things flying away, especially masks, you know, mm -hmm. they've been left on tables and being pulled away. Um, it hasn't been as bad as we thought, but of course, we don't really, even with COVID, we, are, we don't really know how long this, this will go on for. So even just, I mean, the, the mask we're wearing now and uh, all these other personal protection devices, these are all single use items. Exactly. And the impact of them will be seen in a couple of years time, I guess. Exactly. Uh, we and still don't know how. And how outside of COVID, work. I think it's a, gen it's a good uh, rule of thumb to basically whatever item you have in your life that is single use you should seek to replace with something reusable because Indeed. reduction is the key exactly even just logically it doesn't make sense to use something once and throw it away mm, i think takeaways have become a very big problem too with all the ways exactly. they generate so maybe we should make more sensible decisions and i would like to close off this the slot of ours by asking you, how do you think we can be more environmentally conscious? We, how can we live more in harmony mm -hmm. with, with the environment around us? In we, our daily choices, I mean. Every day, it's, I think people get very uh, disheartened with, uh, with being sustainable sometimes because there's so much you need to do that you, you, you almost get this fear to... Overwhelmed. Fear, fear, uh, you get overwhelmed, you get this fear to act then. So I would recommend for people to Pick one item a week that you gen can genuinely change. Something that you really consume a lot of in your, in your daily life that over a week you can see how to replace this, how to reduce this. A simple one, for example, is, is starting with water. If, you know, if everyone looks at their recycling, they realize that a lot of their recycling is actually water bottles, plastic water bottles. And, so, and besides just the physical work of carrying six packs of water into your house, <laughs> there is you'll notice that a lot of this plastic that we're generating it can be can be reduced through either appliances or just more eco-friendly choices being more conscious isn't just about using less of an item or using a more sustainable item it could be cutting that item out completely you have there is there is nothing nothing is free so even in terms of resources we need to be conscious that whatever product we are consuming ultimately has a cost and that cost, we will either pay for it now upfront and with your money 
or down the line environmentally and this is something that maybe um, our generation and I mean generations after us are going to feel the effects of them because this is by time this is how you start realizing that biodiversity might be going down that there are a landfill might be out of control so over over this Christmas season and even going to 2021, I think a good place to start would be looking each everyone looking at their lives and seeing how they can start reducing their their footprint on the earth. So many ideas for Christmas. I mean, wrapping papers. Exactly. Try to use brown paper instead of you know the normal glittery one because exactly. the glittery one cannot be recycled. Exactly, and glitter and, and even in terms of, for example, food waste. You know, like waste isn't just plastic or uh, or uh, or these similar items i mean food waste is like a huge very issue. Big problem too. food waste contributes to global warming because when it's put on a landfill it's that it releases methane and we we can't forget that in malta we live 10 minutes away unfortunately from people who don't have a meal on their table you know even just from a humanitarian point of view it's important not to waste food just because there are you could do there's someone within your area that could that does not have this this privilege so to say that's very important especially now that christmas time is coming exactly. and, and it's been a hard year for everyone so again being more conscious and being more more caring and how we how we carry ourselves can have a huge impact down the line if everyone pulls their pulls their own we have to work as one in this. Exactly. Andrew, thank you very much for the very val Welcome. valid work you do. And uh, thank you for the Malta Airport Foundation for providing us with this time to actually raise more awareness and discuss such problems. Exactly. Thank you very much, Andrew.